Hi everyone, welcome to the A Life of Education podcast. We're here with Sujith Vergas. Hey. Hi. <laughs> um, so we wanted to bring you here today because you have such an incredible story and I've been following you on Instagram for quite a long time. I'm a little Insta stalker of yours. Uh-huh. Um, so maybe you can tell us about your story and what happened. Okay, uh, basically I was born and brought up here and I did my schooling over here and then uh, after a certain grade I moved to India. Kerala is where I'm basically from. And uh, I was in Kerala for two, three years, and then I moved to Bangalore to study my college for a bachelor's in commerce. So it's during my bachelor's in commerce when uh, I met with an accident, and a bike accident. And uh, Like a motorbike or a bicycle? A motorbike, a motorbike. Okay. Yeah, totally. Loved, I was into a lot of racing, mm-hmm. so I loved racing a lot. And uh, it, was, it happened on March 31st in my final year of college, my third year of college. And uh, yeah, that's what happened. And then the next memory of me literally was waking up in a hospital bed. And uh, and uh, it, it, by the time I woke up, about three days already passed by. So I was on ventilators and in coma, pretty much unconscious for for three days. And I woke up on the fourth day. And uh, people telling me already two surgeries had been done on my body. So that's that's like in short how it all started. So what what happened to your body exactly? In well, the- um, when I woke up, my my parents were there. The first very memory I have was. Me waking up and I'm I'm looking in a I'm looking and my parents are staring at me, and my first thought that runs in my mind is like my my sisters my sisters were there as well, and I'm like why are they here, <laughs> what are they doing in Bangalore? Because I was they were in Dubai my sister and mom everybody and it was just me in Bangalore studying for my college and I'm wondering and what are they doing here and I ask uh, and the first question I received that day was my dad asking me, can you see me? And I just nodded because I, w- I, have, I, I have no idea what was happening. I was kind of semi-conscious. I just nodded and then my, followed by my mom and she asked me, do you recognize us? I was like, yeah. And that's it. I just, I just, I just, I, I passed out because I was on very high medication. So it took me a few days to realize I was only awake for about 20 minutes to 30 minutes a day. Oh, for really? an entire day, yeah. I was only awake for 10, 20 to 30 minutes and rest of the time I was unconscious or I was on some kind of medication and things like that. And uh, so it took me a few days and then my brother came the next day and he was like, Sujit, you met with an accident and uh, you're in the ICU in a hospital. And I said, okay, what, what happened? Like, we don't know, but you'll be fine and you're in the ICU right now. And I look at myself and I'm, on a, I'm just lying straight and I have tubes running through my mouth and my nose and that's how I was being fed for a couple of days and after two weeks of being in the ICU is when I was moved to the ward and uh, that's when apparently the doctors uh, proclaimed that I would be now he's going to survive so for two weeks it was like you know a life or you know he might he might not it was it was more of that touch and go yeah Mm. so and uh, yeah and after two weeks when I got to get to the ward a lot of people would come visit me and you know I realized a lot of people had so many questions to me you know they were asking me how happened where were you who was with you what did you do or how did it happen and i, I had no idea i had i had literally no idea my very last memory of the previous night was i was in a friend's house and uh, we took our bikes out for a ride so i used to ride i used to love riding bikes i used to love racing so we, we had a thing where we used to do in bangalore usually you know since it's all friends uh, we used to just take our bikes out for a night ride just you know drive have a tea or something you know very close by and just come back so it was it was one such night where we took the bikes out and uh, all I remember is getting on the bike and a friend getting behind me and that was it. What kind of bike is it? Uh, it's a, it was an R15. So 125 cc. It's yeah, it was a uh, 150 cc. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not, it was not a super bike, but yeah, you know, it was still fast. Enough. Eh? It was still good enough for back yeah. roads. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know. And that's that's the, that's the last thing you know. The next thing you're that's away, the last you're thing I know. Up. I just remember sitting on the bike and we we are going and that's it. And how about your friend? Uh, sh- you mean after the accident? Oh, you, oh memory-wise. Now, even she does not recall anything, pretty much. Was she in the was accident? She, she was in the accident as well, yeah. And is she okay? She was initially very critical. Uh, she had a pretty bad head injury and things like that, but now she is fine. And nobody remembers what happened? Nobody remembers what happened. But there was another bike. There were two bikes, actually. My bike and there was another bike. And uh, the other people were like, apparently, I was under a tunnel and... Uh, my crash guard of the bike hit a truck okay a stationary truck or so right and uh, that's how i lost balance so because i was still on the bike i was still trying to control it but it was way off balance so you just just clipped it she yeah something yeah. like that that's yeah. what they're saying so she flew off the bike 
and uh, my bike hit a footpath oh. and the footpath so i'm still on the bike cuz i'm holding the handles and me and the bike went and hit a pillar which was on uh, on on a uh, on the side cuz it was like a lot of shops on the side so my bike and my my body hit a pillar and the pillar broke and it fell on me oh. by the impact of my back and that's how i even ended up injuring my spinal cord so you basically you injured your spinal cord did you have a head injury i did well? have a head injury as well you had so a helmet on yeah i did not have a helmet on yeah. okay so that's one thing uh, i i tell a lot of people today like you know a lot of riders out there because i have a lot of rider friends i tell them like you know it's 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 not fun like though at that moment it was fun but you know i could have saved a lot of head injury a uh, head damage that night if i did have a helmet i did have a helmet but it was on my hand okay so that that's what happened so uh, my head and my spine my back hit the pillar and um, i had a pretty bad head, head injury because i had about 18 fractures on my skull really oh yeah Whoa. i had 18 fractures on my skull and i had uh, so i'm very lucky i would say because one of my injury which was on my uh, my eyebrow bone it pierced my eye down so the doctors actually initially verdict was uh, to my parents like he's not going to see from his right eye that's why your dad was asking you can you see can him? you see me exactly ah, yeah, okay. that was the that's how it came up and uh, Yeah I mean they told me like this so they told my dad like his cuz it was covered for a few days he might not see cuz his eyes are depressed and he has a head injury so they told basically three things to my parents he's never going to see again he's never going to walk wow, again okay. and he's never going to he's going to have a very weak memory why that because from the 18 fractures i mean that's a lot of injury right and it's only on one side it's not even it's like every entire 18 is like on on my right and uh, one of my fracture one of the one of the fractures kind of pierced to the last layer of the of the skull right so it kind of touched the brain not touched the brain so that would have been very that would have been entirely uh, entirely different scenario right now you know if do you have any that. memory problems no nothing no no no, no. that's why i tell people you know it's just me i can see all of you everything yeah, is fine I remember <laughs> good i remember all of you <laughs> yeah you know, cool but, good but it was initially yes i did initially how it was it was like um, So my first two weeks in the hospital if I met somebody today and I met them tomorrow I wouldn't remember th- I wouldn't right, remember right, that right. yeah it was it, that that phase was there but that was just initial trauma maybe that was lasted maybe a, less than a month yeah but I did have that as well yeah your brain is doing so much recovering isn't it that yeah. it can only do one thing at a time at that initial stage so i think i'm very lucky that way you know like 18 fractures i mean on your skull on my skull itself oh my and, God, and that's you should mental. see you should see the picture i was going to ask do you have x-rays i i do have an x-ray yeah. <laughs> oh it's deadly people are, so that's when i start my talks usually i show them x-ray everyone is like so i'm like okay now since i have your attention yeah. uh, <laughs> this is what yeah. we got where your helmet and do you have plates and stuff in your skull or did they do lots of surgery there oh uh, Luckily no plates no nothing they did surgeries because you know they had to so my eyes they thought they're going to lose it but they did want to fix it so they did a surgery for all of that and you know I think just to stabilize it but no plates or any of that stuff but I do have two rods on my on my back that was also impl- uh, implanted uh, during the surgery so I have no memory of this cuz by the time I woke up all this was done on me already yeah. you know the surgeries and uh, I had two major surgeries initially um and it was a very high level surgery because it was a total of 12 hours each surgery was about 6 6 so it was a very complicated surgery so what was surgery. the what was the injury you suffered to your back my spinal cord yeah. i injured my spine i kind of i my my spine at my T5 T6 is crushed okay so they put two plates to uh, balance it and um, so because of the crush injury all the neurons and the nerves are like blocked over there so below that i'm paralyzed and um i cannot uh, move or feel below my chest level of okay. t5 t6 so that was what happened that night is there uh, do they ever say to you that because it wasn't severed is there any chance that you might be able to regain that so um so it it, it was a complete injury i mean they when they did a verdict for it it was it was a complete more than an incomplete and the uh, doctors were giving me all negative responses but even even in the hospital he was like so this is your life get adapted to it he told my parents the same thing now your lives are going to change and this is how it's going to be but from day 1 till date i've never believed that like yeah, okay. those words never sunk in me you know i mean you know so somebody tells you something and no matter they can tell you 50 times 100 times you're never going to believe it it's never going to touch you it's never going to affect you you're not going to be like oh man are you serious like it, yeah. it never it never hit me like that that's honest it never hit me till date it didn't hit me back then So because I never believed like something like that is impossible mm. I mean ob- obviously you know it, it, can't, it can't be impossible you know I mean I've done yeah. so much what people back in the hospital they have said it's impossible 
people around me have told impossible and i've i've broken all those barriers too good me. you have and just watching you know? some of the things some of the fitness things that you do for your body other people would be looking at that going that's crazy like it's no, crazy it pushes but it's me, amazing you know? it, it pushes me so much cuz so about the fitness videos i started it uh, cuz i wanted to show people after my accident so after my accident uh, there was a small phase where i did so doctors were not giving me much hope the the doctors at the hospitals and stuff cuz there was no cure and stuff for spinal cord injury and there was this one indian treatment i i took at that time in 2013 end this happened in march 31st 2013 yeah, well, so this accident just yeah when did that happen march, march 31st 2013 2000, yeah 2013 so for was that four and a half years ago five nearly yeah yeah nearly yeah. five years ago okay and uh, after that so since doctors were not giving me much hope i went and i took a uh, indian herbal treatment and this guy was more like a very uh, uh what do you say like a It's not a proper clinic and stuff but he was like known to heal para- paralyzed people else and he has done it and all the things is what I've heard and uh, I took up his treatment for 3 months so because of that because I was doing a ayurvedic treatment I was put on a very strict diet a very brutal diet I would say rather so if you hear the diet it's it's unbelievable but Tell I was on it for 3 months sorry Tell us about it I was on bread and sugar as breakfast for 3 months wow so to breakfast. start with as breakfast okay I was on rice and lady finger gravy as lunch again for 3 months rice and gravy rice and just a gravy of lady finger gravy what's lady finger lady finger the okay. Okay. Oh, okay. okay yeah okay and uh, and yeah and and again in the evening it was just rice and something else I had no juices I could not drink anything I could not eat anything I could not touch meat nothing and see you should realize is already after my accident it obviously took a toll on my health and my physique and you know i shrunk down and everything yeah because i was on tubes and being fed by liquid fed and uh, on top of that this diet can you believe like sugar and bread like what who yeah. do, who does that right mm. <laughs> but this guy this guy put me on it and i thought it's all part of the course and you know i just went along with it and because uh, for me it was only to recover there was nothing else in my mind because after my accident everyone is like now what's going to happen about you you know everyone started looking with sympathies and a lot of questions came to me you know when i came back home after the hospital people are asking me can you eat now how are you going to sleep how are you going to do in life um you know and it was, i had the most weirdest questions i had the most weirdest questions asked to me and uh, people looking on me like you know at least what job is he going to do it's okay he doesn't have to do a job it's okay this is life this is what this one's and it was it was very very negative very negative from a lot of people and everybody just wanted to touch my leg cuz and this was another very i th- i think by default a lot of people don't realize how to approach a person when they have been through a trauma or something mm. like that but just when they know that i couldn't feel my legs they should just come and touch like oh, you can't feel that really like and 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 that affected me as well you know like in in a, in a way yeah so When you go from the hospital phase, what kind of stage are you at when you're eating sugar and bread for breakfast? Are you trying to put back on yeah, just no, any kind so of weight? No, I, I mean, I should have been eating a lot of meat. I think if he wanted me to gain, but he was like, because it's going to be an Ayurvedic, it's got to be pure wedge and it's got to be very restrictive because we want your body to respond in so and so way. I never understood it. And because I went through that treatment for three months, by the time I was done in three months, um, you guys know what a pressure sore is? pressure sore yeah yeah yeah, you, yeah. so yeah. you have the special i had those too the special yeah. mattresses and they have to turn you and, and things like that yeah you need mm. to you know do you want to just explain what it is for the people listening who who may not okay, know okay so it's very <laughs> it's very brutal it's basically now since you're paralyzed your muscles are not very it's not it's not contracting it's not expanding it's it's just loose right and because of that your bone pressure that you put on your bony areas uh, like your bony areas when you put pressure on it it kind of presses and it kind of destroys that muscle layer by layer so first your skin starts getting damaged then the first layer of skin goes your second layer of skin goes and then your skin completely goes and then your muscle starts dying off and then it becomes if and if it keeps going in such a way it, it can be a point where your bones can be seen through your body it's muscle wasting it's so muscle that, wasting yeah the muscle basically. wastes so much yeah. and then you get like a a pressure sore so the skin a big hole on your body in yeah. short <laughs> and the, it get can get infected and so they have to turn you and move which you which is why stuff. in order to avoid that you've got to keep moving yeah, yeah. you got that, to that's this. that's even why i keep picking myself up sure, like sure. yeah 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 now that's I, i had a friend uh who i used to live with in the uk who we moved out here my um, about a year after i got a phone call that he broke his neck playing rugby 
And when we flew back to the UK to visit him, one of the things we had to do, because he was quite early, he was still in the hospital, we had to help him move around because he couldn't move himself around. He was much higher. So he could move his arms, but he can't move. He's not got the greatest of dexterity and he can't move below. So he, like you're able to move with your arms. We had to help him moving around. Initially, even even in the hospitals, I was moved, I think, every every hour. Every hour the nurses would come because I had literally no strength to even move left or right initially. So they used to come and they used to turn me left mm-hmm. every one hour, even including the nights. Including nights, every one and a half hours they used to come and turn me left, right. And uh, that's how it was just to keep the pressure away. Yeah. So this guy, this Ayurvedic guy treatment we had and uh, he used to keep hitting on my side like this. He used to just tap on the sides of my thigh and he used to be like, that's for... That's for the blood flow to be there. And I have no idea. And since I don't feel any pain, it does not, ma- you know. Sure. So I was like, okay, maybe it's a part of the treatment. But eventually it, it became all this diet and I got, I started getting infections inside because of a thing, very poor diet or something. And I started noticing on the thighs, on the, my side of my thighs, it started becoming black slowly. And, the, and I didn't know it was dead because that was dead muscle because I have no idea. And he was like, no, it's going to go off and things like that. And uh, one day I started getting shivers, you know, I used to wake up and I was shivers and I knew there was fever, I knew there was an infection, there was temperature, but I was not allowed to go to a hospital, but he's like, because it would contradict with the medicines he's doing. So for me at this stage of my life, I'm just desperate. I would try anything. I would go through hell just to get back on my feet, you know, and my, and my mom was there with me and she was like, she saw it and she also knew it. He's just doing it to get back on his feet. But then a point came where one day I woke up and uh, I'm just shivering. I'm just shivering. Shivering is not stopping for at least another three, four hours. And I'm drinking hot cups of boiling water that entire month or two, three weeks just to keep my body warm because for the shivers, I, I couldn't take it. I used to sleep on like five, six blankets and things like that. And uh, my sister came to give me some food. And she was in Kerala at that time. Came to give me some food and I just uh, vomited the whole thing. And I couldn't, I couldn't even pick myself up. I really, didn't have yeah. that much energy so in me. So did you, di- did you have an infection? What was it? So till then I didn't go to the hospital. And then I go to the hospital. And no, actually, then we call a nurse home. And we just take a blood test to see if, you know, what's his blood levels like. And she comes back like three hours later. And she's like, you know, tells my mom, take him to the hospital ASAP. Like, don't wait. His infection level is like out of the oh, roof. Really? Yeah. He should be like, if, if this is going to go, he's going to, he can get blind and like, his blood levels are like super low and uh, you know it, it was it was it was bad it mm-hmm. was very bad and even even i forgot to mention one thing during the accident um so basically the first thing somebody does to you when you have an accident is they come and check your vitals yeah it's called gse if i'm not wrong gse uh, and uh, mine was about four out of 15 15 being normal and mine yeah. was about three or four out of 15 and the guy even the guy the male nurse who took me from the accident spot i met him like last day he was like dude you're the same guy man i took you at a risk this is what he told me i'm like what do you mean he's like risk because if you died in the ambulance whose responsibility are you because we have not even reached the hospital yeah you know that's 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 what i've been told i'm like, I used to say, like yeah you were very bad you had only three or four gse uh, out of uh, out of 15 so you were barely responding you barely had a pulse you you were barely alive and after and after I just recovered, and this is the phase again for me. And I went. I was rushed to a hospital. The doctors examined me. They immediately put me back in an ICU. I had a lot of blood transfusions because really, oh yeah, because my my blood was very very, my body was like completely infected, you know, yeah. with with infections. And suddenly the wounds were open, and they're like, this is like an open wound, and they started taking off the dead flesh and. Believe it or not, by in 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 like three days, I had like two three holes on my body. Literally, I had bed sores as big as a palm would fit in my hand. Wow. I had like huge bed sores, not, not like, not the small ones. I had like a palm would fit in my And this is all stuff you're not aware of. And I was not aware of it yeah. and I, I, because I'm not aware of what a spinal cord injury was till then, you know, yeah. and I'm just learning and I'm, I'm just still learning what is what and what's a bed, show, bed sore and pressure sore and, and things like that. And this is what happened. So I'm curious, after all of this recovery, uh, when did you decide to move back to Dubai? Because Re- that's when your life started to change and you started to get into fitness and become like a fitness influencer and an inspirational speaker. So when did you decide to move back to Dubai? So for me, fitness was always there. Uh, when I was in Bangalore as well, I, w- I used to gym, but not very religiously. You know, I used to be in fitness, but I used to be into boxing. So boxing was uh, something that had a, had a huge impact on me because that's something that gave me a lot of discipline. From boxing is where I literally got my discipline. 
and that's something they used to keep me in focus so i used to love boxing so i used to religiously go training every day um some of the days twice a day some of the days after college i used to be there for boxing so boxing so i was more into boxing martial arts than uh, than just uh, gymming and uh, after my accident i lost a lot of weight and after those injuries so because of this man's treatment i was also in and out of hospitals having a lot of surgeries until date i've had about 13 to 14 surgeries because of these wounds i was going to ask so you you had two main surgeries before this guy yeah and then you had another 10 11 An- another 10 11 just because of this guy wow that's yeah. crazy that yeah. goes to show like how important it is to be referred to the right person exactly and to go under the right care like and, and, and you know a lot of people come to you saying oh this is a method this is a method why don't you try this mm. and uh, this is the consequences of it you know because even i did the same thing i just tried something new yeah. and uh, this is what it led to i mean 13 to 14 so like yeah. 11 to 10 12 surgeries just because, just because of, of this man's uh yeah. that's crazy yeah and uh, yeah. i really like relate to you a lot when you're talking about this because when i had my accident i was doing the same like i was so desperate to get better that i was going to do anything and at that stage i think i would have listened to anyone and i did some crazy treatment that uh yeah it's but you got to be careful at the same time and i think i spoke to you about this uh before the podcast about how we started allo and and why this all came about we really wanted to help people find the right information the right resources and to be led in the right direction and particularly for the fitness community for them to be able to um to give people the right adequate care as opposed to you know like what this guy did to you which is yeah yeah crazy. because even as far as i know there's a lot of treatments they say is available out there and i've now i stayed away from all of it because i know what a spinal cord injury is and who you should actually be approaching than random people like these yeah. for me at that point was just de- i was just desperate i mean i was i was 20 years old and you know and people are telling me you're never going to walk again and that's something i could never never even imagine you know and i never believe but i never did you know but it's the whole being in a wheelchair throughout the day not being able to go to a place because you don't have the right accesses to it you know you suddenly start thinking like okay is that place now wheelchair accessible yeah and you dubai know? it's yeah. tough in dubai it's not there's not like i realized this as well there's not a lot of places that are wheelchair accessible or that make it easy um mm-hmm. for people with disabilities but, but I, i i'll come to that one so i've 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 kind of figured my way out in the hard way and uh, as you said you asked me earlier right like how did i come up with all this so when all this negativity was going on in my life just when i thought people were giving me uh uh sympathies and things after my accident it just got a lot worse after i was in the hospital second time due to th- because of this guy and uh, when i came out of the hospital this time i literally you know lost a lot of weight my collarbones were like just popping out you know i i, I didn't have even strength to even you know pick myself up i was that weak and um, then my dad was like in 2014 and 15 he was like okay we got your visa you can come back. you know let's get you back to dubai you know let's make things better now and um me and so my mom so you could be with your family yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's so important so we thought actually india would be better for the rehabilitation and stuff but then unexpectedly all these things came in the picture so we are like yeah sure and then we came back in 2014 14 15 nearly beginning so that was a long gap for me me being as a boy who left dubai at the age of in my 10th grade to study in india and now i'm returning back after all these years yeah and um, so i came back i didn't even c- finish complete my college because this happened like before a month before my final exams right. and um, so i was still like what were you studying bachelor's in commerce okay and uh, i came back to dubai and that at the time i was not working i was not studying i was i was literally doing nothing i was just waking up home and you know watching some youtube videos watching tv and just just maybe going out with some friends and all initially so i used to look for a lot of people like you know where i could go where i could access things like that and um So I needed to do something other than you know just sit and warm my wheelchair. Can you guys guess what I wanted to do? No, what did you no? want to do? Okay, I wanted, wanted to, to obviously I wanted to ride your start bike? working out oh. again. Oh, I wanted to ride a bike. Riding riding a bike is still so this is a question I get asked a lot. Like dude, would you get back on a bike? I'm like hell yeah. Mm. Like why wouldn't I? Like, I think everybody expects like no, I'm not going to I'm going to sorry interject that. I have so after my accident I started following all these amazing people on Instagram. You were one of them. And uh one of the other people that I watched is uh followed is this guy called Aaron Wheels. Oh and yeah, oh he's crazy. <laughs> he is he's is another he's amazing. Crazy. But do you know yeah. what was so and so I follow Aaron Wheels and Amy Purdy and then a, a couple of other people and they're all people who have done 
amazing things and they have so Amy Bodie has both legs were amputated from the shin and she's uh, the US like a uh, champion in skiing uh, or snowboarding okay. um, in the in the Paralympics like she's mm-hmm. amazing and then Aaron Wheels as well, oh, yeah. he was a, a BMX rider, yeah. had an accident as well and then uh, now he does the same thing in he his does wheelchair. He the most craziest things on a wheelchair Back flip. Like, oh, yes. oh like yeah. triple flips off, yeah. like he's, he's from insane yeah. it's like evil Knievel watching him yeah. and I just like it makes my heart go yeah. like this but what's so amazing about that is he's living like he's living he's living he's, he's enjoying living. his life and there's yeah. and there's uh, yeah there, there's nothing else to that you know like yeah. he's, he's killing it every single day there's nothing that holds him back yeah. and, and, you, and you I think he see. would he does better than I think other guys what yeah, they would probably sure. do on yeah. uh, you know yeah, yeah. what and I'm saying definitely the, better biggest, than me. <laughs> the biggest thing there is like you can see that that sets his soul on fire like it just makes him feel alive and he's doing that and that's the most inspiring thing ever that, that's exactly how what drove me for my fitness as well so when i wanted to go back to the gym i'm like you know what i want to go back to the gym that's what i told my mom i need to get my body back i need to get my physique back i need i need my i need my zone and fitness was always something that kept me in my in my pace and um, so people asked me was like the first things are like okay but do you think you can do much in a gym and i'm like i don't know i mean it's been a while it's been a forever i'm like but i want to go that's all i know and they were like Okay, and then my mom is like, do what you have to do. If you want to go, let's you you should go. And then the next day, I called my buddy and I'm like, hey, let's go to the gym. So there was a gym when I when I was in Bangalore, when I used to come to Dubai for like a month or two for vacation, I used to go hit the gym in the next building. And uh, me and my buddy, we go to the gym and I meet the trainer. He's like, hey man, what happened to you, dude? Like, it's been forever. I was like, yeah, you know, this, this happened. And uh, he's like, you know what? Okay, fine. Let's get you back in tomorrow. I'll meet you in the afternoon. I'm like, cool. I go back in the afternoon the next day and um, he starts giving me about five kilos max. And for me, it's a joke. I mean, yeah. If you know, anybody else knows out there, like having five kilos is like a joke and nobody touches five kilos, you know. It's only for very rare exercises. Usually it's 20 or 10. I'm like, why is he giving me five? And then we start with five and that was hard for me as well. Cause because of my injury, I lost a lot of balance. You know, like initially, if I raised my hands up, I would just fall on each side. You know, because it's... Yeah. As in like fainting, your no, blood no, pressure I, I, was low? I don't have balance. My trunk balance oh, is okay. not there, so I would just fall. So you would tip to the side? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so initially, when I started being able to sit properly on a, after the accident, if, if I sat, I always needed somebody to hold on something or someone to hold me. Or, you know, because I was not used to this. You know, it was very, very wobbly, my, my base, you know, sitting. So I would just fall yeah. on each side. So it took me a while to get used to all this, start sitting straight, you know. And today, like... It's, it's it's okay, but back then it was very different. And uh, before I come to how I got into fitness, let me tell you what actually started the fire within me. What actually gave me the guts to start doing something. So even though everything was negative, I mean, obviously, even my mindset was going in a way like, you know, now what's going to happen? So just like, what's the next move? Everything was so unclear. There was no um, going back to college maybe now, or what are you going to do? Are you going to job, work, work? You're 20, man, like, what's the scene, you know? And then I started seeing a video. So I used to, one thing I used to do always was watch a lot of motivational videos because I had so much of time in my hand. I was just home all day. So I, w- I was used to just surf through YouTube, watch a lot of motivational videos. And I came across a story of a guy called Dewey Bonzello. Okay, in, sh- in short, long story short, he was a guy at the age of 23. He got convicted for a murder of a woman, a 90-year-old woman. And the only witnesses against him were a few local thugs. He was convicted. He was in prison. And... Uh, for 10 years, first he was like a very angry man and things like that. And you know, he was uh, in the uh, prison fitness program and things like that. And then after 10, 20 years, nearly 20 years, he got another trial. And in the trial, the prosecution came and told him, Dewey, if you confess to the crime, we'll at least allow you to go on bail. But then you know what Dewey said at that time? I'm not going to allow jail to define who I am. You know, I'm going to make my attitude do that. He did not give up and he started writing to this law firm for five years every day and then they finally took up his case after five years because they kept ignoring his case. And when they took up his case, they just found out that all the proof against him were false. And then after 30 years, that means totally of 20 and then he got, he was still in another jail for another 10 years. At the age of 53, he was let out of jail as a free man with the court court apologizing to him for the injustice that they did to him. But the thing is, 
he fought for 30 years it took him 30 years but end of the day he walked out as a free man with a clean shit and i thought to myself man this guy fought for 30 years for something that he believed in he did not give up and the result showed like end of the day he walked out as a free man and i thought i thought i thought to myself sujit what gives you the right to just be negative and give up when yours is not even one or two years old you know when it's when your injury just happened why are you giving up so fast when did you ever start learning to give up you know you never thought of it like why why now just because everyone's saying it i mean when did you ever start living your life on others opinions this is what i started thinking to myself i'm like you know what i'm going to do the first thing i wanted to do was prove everyone wrong so everyone the only thing they told me is like sujit no you can't go there because there's no wheelchair there's no ramp there's nobody to take you it's hard it's not easy things like that you're not well you know you should be more careful now these were what i heard i'm like what's the one thing they're not allowing me to do this was one very basic thing in my own house in kerala i wanted to sleep in the top floor now a lot of people will be like well, no what's the big deal he wants to sleep in his room because my room was on the top floor and uh, the only deal was my room they had steps to go and i'm on a wheelchair and there's no way i can go on top and people are like there's no way we can put a lift for you obviously there's no way your mom can carry you <laughs> i'm like yeah definitely not what did i do what do i do but i need to go I'm I like, I can imagine exactly tell me, what, what, do you you think? what do you think what do you think I'll tell you, yeah <laughs> no cuz I I did really similar things to uh-huh. to that too so you sat on your bum and pushed yourself up exactly, the stairs Exactly that's exactly I'm like High you know five, what man, I'm, that's amazing I'm, 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 I I can't walk it I can't run it I'm going to crawl it and everyone thought this was crazy and I asked my mom I want to crawl it. and she's like Sajid no and she 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 just feels for me you know she's like she just wants me to be safe and stuff I was like the third day I asked her I asked her first day she was like no second day no the third day i was just so this thing i was like i have to do it for her to see it and i just wheel myself to the end of the step and i get i i i keep one hand on my chair and one hand on the on the step and i sit and i sit and i sit 18 steps up and then i go to my i i get on a couch and then to my wheelchair and then i go to my room and in the mornings i come back down the same way mm mm-hmm. and i did that every day i was there mm. suddenly when i did this this one very simple move of going to my room and sleeping to my room sleeping in my room people started wondering how did he do it till then there was something it was impossible suddenly they saw it was possible and they started asking me how did you do it that is literally the first thing that gave me a sign of uh, belief in myself like you just did something what everybody cool. thought was impossible mm-hmm. yeah cool you just did something what nobody ever thought of nobody ever thought of crawling everyone thought of walking everyone thought of putting a lift everyone thought of carrying did anybody think of crawling up no but you did and i did it mm-hmm. suddenly i started to see i started to see life in a very different perspective that's exactly what i did and then coming back to dubai i'm like now you, i'm not going to stop myself here just in one act i'm like i'm i need to get back to a gym I go to my trainer trainer the fo- so as I said the first day it was just 5 kilos and things like that but I was I was getting a hang of it over the over I think just within a month he saw there was a major improvement in me that I was doing good cuz I still had I could still do a lot of things but yes I did learn a lot as you're saying about fitness education because there was a lot of wrong things I did as well so one thing because I didn't have any trunk balance when I used to lift some heavy weights let's say for bicep curls from the machine yeah so the minute so i could never s- stay straight by myself due to lack of trunk balance so i needed somebody to hold me so he used to put his arm um, hands on my chest and my shoulders so i do not move forward and i used to do the bicep curl but then one day when we did a very heavy weight we did everything 50 or s- kilos or something he just left it because i was done with my set but the but the the cable was still in my hand and i fell with the cable on the floor because the weights just Too took heavy. me down and that's when we real and that's when I also realized oh something like this can happen you know so you got to figure your way out and then I started learning I started tying myself up you know I made sure that I, so I this was literally trial and error practice for me yeah. this is not something I to I could google or youtube or yeah, see yeah. fails wheelchair fails or things <laughs> like that you know so I had I had to do it myself and then I realized so so I used to I have asked a lot of people when I had during some particular sets dude can you just hold my hold my shoulders so i don't move and when i do really heavy i take the 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 weight be- the waist belt yeah. and i and i tie myself on the machine so i started doing it but then there were still certain exercises like i couldn't do like squat uh, like maybe squats for the legs or for the back uh, uh some exercises with dumbbells which are not physically possible but i used to do my own research for it 
and find out how to hit that particular mu target muscle, mu how, to, how to target that particular muscle in a different variation, in a different form. So I've done my own researches as well and I've improvised as much as I can, you know. And even, uh, even for, um, for, my, for, my, for, my, for my abs, I, I couldn't, like there was, so I could do a lot of, I initially started doing for chest, back, tricep, bicep, shoulders. All these seem possible. But then even for, the, for, my, tr for my waist, uh, for my stomach muscles, there were very limited exercises as I couldn't do ab crunches. So basically if I'm down, I'm down. There's no way I can come back up if I'm lying on the floor. So I used to improvise a lot with weights. I used to, I used to like... Uh, is that just a weakness or is that, is that a, as a result of the accident? It's, it's a result of the accident. It's all the result of the accident. Sure. I've lost the trunk power. Sure. So I do not have that much of trunk power. But then, so I, I improvise myself in my own app crunches. I have like cables where I hold it and I, I come back. So I put like a pretty decent amount of weights. Yeah. So I have the strength to come down, but I don't, I wouldn't have to come back up. But the weights pull me back up. You get it? So I used yeah. to improvise like that as well. Then I used to do a lot of groundwork. So I, I, today, literally, I mix myself with weights and body weights. Because I love body weights. Do you swim? Oh, I wish I could. I wish I could. Yeah, you can't. Open no. wound? Yeah, no. Uh, I mean, I do not technically know. Yeah. But I have tried being on a swimming pool as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so to see if I float or just go down. But I just go down. Yeah. But I, so I, I, I You've do... You've got... Because I, I did uh, a lot of hydrotherapy and it's, it's amazing. Honestly, it just gives you the most amazing feeling but uh, I was strapped to floaties because I couldn't float mm -hmm. either. Yeah. I lost a lot of weight as well yeah. and I just sunk. Yeah. Um, so you get strapped in and then you... Like yeah, you just... Say, so I just hold on the sides. So by that, I just don't... But I just stay in the pool, you know, whatever. But I, I've not had much of hydrotherapy, but yeah. But I know what you're saying because even yeah. I, I wanted to experiment that side. So I got on my friend's pool to see if I will uh, float by default, but no, not really. Yeah, there's some really good floaty devices Things is, yeah, that, that you right? can buy that keep you like from drowning. <laughs> Should try it on maybe next time. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I have them at home, so I'll bring them for uh, you totally. next time. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I mean, that, that's how it all started, you know. So I, I literally learned my way in how to improvise, how to tie myself, how to ask people for support. Because then there were certain exercises I even needed my wheelchair to be grounded. So right, I used okay. to, yeah, I put plates on my wheelchair and... Um, so I, I basically started uh, vlogging about it, putting on my Insta story to show people that Sujit has not given up. But today I do it for a whole different purpose to motivate people. Yeah. So uh, this is how it all started. So initially my mom used to drop me to the gym. So this is literally, okay, if you, if you see the start of how it started and how it built up all the way. My mom used to wheel me all the way to the gym and my trainer used to drop me back under my building. So I could just have to catch the lift and go. Because I was very, uh, you know, it's a road. I'm going to wheel myself. Then it started becoming, I'm wheeling myself to the gym. And then I got sponsored by UFC Gym and Business Bay. Cool. And because uh, me and Chris Fade and all collaborated at that time and we had a lot of events going on. Awesome. And uh, I, I, I became a public motivational speaker by 2017, 16, 17. I became a motivational speaker. I've spoken in a lot of colleges, a lot of schools, a lot of companies. I even gave a TEDx talk. Mm -hmm. Last year, I know that I was saw. in that was in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, <laughs> I've been secretly stalking that, you. <laughs> that, that was in October. That that was like that was a big uh, surprise for me as yeah. well when I got the invite. And um, so when they sponsored me, and they were like, "You can come out and work out in our gyms, and it's gonna be amazing." And I was like, "That's cool," but the only problem is, again, I am in Sharjah. I stay in Sharjah, and they are all the way in Business Bay. Yeah, and how everyone is like, there? "Dude, that's mm -hmm. so cool. You got sponsored, but how are you gonna go?" What do you think, Ellen? I went or not? <laughs> found a way yeah i i know that you found a way like i know it i don't I know how i totally <laughs> did i, I totally did and everyone's like again nobody can drop you all the way to business bay man every day and wait for you to work out finish working out and come back i was like i'm gonna find a way and i did the same i'm like wait i'm not driving yet but there's public transport exactly but there's no public transport to Sharjah, as in there is taxis but I'm thinking metro-wise, yeah. buses-wise, mm -hmm. and even if I have to get a bus, it has to be like I have to go through a lot of sand and yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. things like that, which is not very c easy for me to. Yeah, and access. especially especially when it's really hot outside. Yeah, and you're in a wheelchair as well. It makes it a lot more challenging. Lot going more harder. Sand in 50 degree heat. Yeah, but what I did was now, if you can can visualize this, I got out of my house. I wheel. I stayed right behind Sahara Center, right in front of Sahara. I wheeled all the way to Sahara, getting over the footbridge, yeah? I get on the footbridge, I enter Sahara. 
I enter Sahara. I exit Sahara Center from the back side of it. So that's like the Dubai. How far away? How far apart are these? Places? Uh, that from my house to Sahara, let's say a total of. I don't know, 800 meters. Okay, 900 that's far, maybe. eh? Yeah, it's... It Especially in the heat. Maybe 800, 700, yeah, easily. In the heat. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. It's the worst. But then I just have my my earpods on, like you my headphones, and I'm like, yeah, I play my jam, and I'm like, <laughs> nothing bothers me, you know? So I, I just keep wheeling, you know? And uh, I, I get out of Sahara from the back, and then I wheel to the Dubai side. From there, I take a cab, and I go to the Gisez metro station, okay? From Gisez metro station, I take the metro, and I go to Union. I shift in Union. I go to Business Bay. Okay, that metro ride takes me about 40, 45 minutes. They're from Gisez to Business Bay. I get down at Business Bay. From there, I take a bus. Mm -hmm. Like right under the Business Bay metro station, I take a bus. And that's another half an hour journey. How do you, can I ask you yeah. this? Because people don't realize, like I've been in a wheelchair here. They don't realize how hard that is. It is because pretty hard. Because that's what you're talking about. Yeah. When you can walk, that's easy. But okay. when you can't, that's oh. not easy. So in, yeah, yeah. in Australia, sorry to interrupt you. No. In, in Australia, the buses are all equipped with like disability buses. Ramps, so they have yeah. this, this ramp that automatically comes down and you can wheel yourself up and they have a spot mm -hmm. for people with disabilities mm -hmm. but do they have that here they have they do have it here oh, they do have most of the both like i think every bus i've been to that does have ramps so if in in business bay area if any of the ramps are not jammed that's because of me because <laughs> i have made them pick it up okay so yeah as you said it, it was it was not easy because um wheeling there, there was a lot of arm power required for me initially and there was like you know not very uh, uneven roads and things like that but i still managed myself to wheel like trust me wheeling myself from my house to sahara backside itself was like a lot yeah then taking yeah. a cab and then the and you're going to work out you're not yeah. you're like you're gonna do more exercise I'm going when you to work out exactly right i i know i remember after hospital i could barely wheel myself like across the road mm -hmm. i'd get across the road and i was so tired, tired. yeah i know yeah. i know initially for me it was as well but i was just so determined i'm like ufc i mean like, come on man i gotta work out over yeah. there i can't lose that opportunity and uh and doing that is when I started realizing, okay, metros became accessible because I used to find out ways to get inside the metro through the, you know, from outside. Mm -hmm. And uh, getting in the metro was not very, not very hard. I just tried to avoid the rush hours because that becomes a big problem for me. Yeah, okay. So luckily for me, it was even the RTA department was very kind. If they saw me through the screens and there was a lot of people, they used to send somebody to move away, mm -hmm. like let the guy get in first, you know. And uh, yeah, so. But even people don't even realize like in a lot of the metros, there's a gap. And if you if you don't have someone helping you, you can get stuck in. You those can gaps. get stuck, yeah. Like totally. I've gotten stuck in stuff yeah? like that okay. too, and it's like, why do people like? As soon as I got into wheelchair, I realized how difficult life was for people in wheelchairs, and that even opening a fridge the right way, like you get stuck, you can't get stuff out. You're like you get stuck. You got to move, like yeah. Once you open the fridge, you got to move a little more back. Yes, you got to reverse, yeah, turn yeah, yeah, around. Yeah. It's like it's a real I, challenge. And so I wanted to see if it was accessible, all these things, but metros were and buses also thankfully were. So initially when I got into a bus, the cab guys, I think they, they, the, the bus drivers are like, oh my God, we, we, the wheelchair guy. I think nobody, pretty much not a lot of people, I think are solo on a wheelchair. I think I'm, maybe they are, but I'm not seen very not in Dubai. often. Yeah. Maybe I'm not seen. So I'm like, I need you to open this. And every bus I've been to initially in the first weeks, the, the, the ramps are there but they jammed because nobody has work. ever used it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm literally the first, I had like tools with me like, here, take it, use this. And like, there were like five guys trying to, and literally, you know, like the first week, it was like literally three, four guys trying it with different equipments to pick the thing up. Fix the ramp. Because it's like, mm -hmm. a, like a small hook and you got to pick the hook up for the ramp to come out. Right. Yeah, and so that that's that's how we did it initially. And then half an hour bus journey. That's so admirable. And like then I used to go to gym. Mm -hmm. Then I reached the uh, UFC gym. Work out there for like two hours and then I come back all the way. The same way how I described going, I come back the same way. So my gym session, because I was not working, I was not studying, I had time in my hand. So my gym session per day used to take me five and a half hours. Wow. Five and a half hours every day. And I was like, you know what? Why not? I mean, I have time, but what's stopping me? Mm -hmm. And I tell people today, man, you have gyms in your own buildings. And you are telling me that you're lazy to go to a gym and work out for half an hour. When I being on a wheelchair, I wheeled myself. Yeah 
worked out in a gym can you imagine working out for 2 hours killing it in a gym and doing the same back i mean i can get it going back but trust me even my arms my shoulder days are the only days i ask my mom please come and <laughs> <laughs> my shoulder days are like the worst like i go super heavy on shoulder days and i'm like i can't feel them yeah. Yeah. you know i need somebody do you, you do know? any uh, floor based work oh totally body weights yeah. i mean body weight workouts i do i do a lot of uh, so i mix it basically for push ups i try to do i do i do a lot with the medicine ball mm-hmm. and i d- i do try to do a lot with for core so i i, I do my own researches as well as much as i can do so initially um it was very weak very bad but today it's it's pretty good so i i totally mix uh, my body weights and my yeah you look like weights. you're in amazing shape yeah. <laughs> thank you you got some good size on you now compared to yeah. what you described yeah before definitely yeah. yeah and so the first time i even did so i wanted to so it was all about motivation for me it just initially it was just to show my videos that you know sujit has not given up he's still he's still doing what he has to do but then i started getting responses i started getting messages from a lot of people like man i see you and i just hit the gym today I have literally got DMs with people telling me like you know Sujit I uh, saw your video today and I I even I had a very long day but I still went to the gym for half an hour I still went to the gym for one hour today and I'm so happy and thank you for always keep going So for me it's just to show people if I'm able to do all this in a wheelchair I mean can you imagine 5 and a half hours just for one gym session where people are complaining about traffic and mm. time when they have yeah. gyms in their own buildings or yeah. next buildings and there's this guy who goes like for me it was just to show people if I can then you definitely can you shouldn't have a reason that's it no honestly just just from being in that situation myself i understand how hard that is like 2 hours traveling that's hard especially when you're in a wheelchair like and it, it's so hot outside um yeah that's really admirable so tell us a little bit more about uh what other things that you're you're doing these days because obviously you're an ambassador for a lot of people you're into fitness um you're doing some amazing things you're a motivational speaker like it's just so, so admirable you, you know it's it's uh, it's a very even i have no idea how i even landed up somewhere like this in my life cuz uh i never pl- i never imagined it never planned how the route would take but as of 2016 is when i was first invited for the chris fade show and chris heard my message and he's like you know we need you on the radio and we just ended up clicking and we became good buddies and in 2017 is when he's like i have an event my fade fit he's he launched the fade fit uh, kids snack and stuff and he was like you know we have a fir- i'm having i'm going to organize a first mo- uh, talk we're going to call a few influencers a few nutritionists and talk on it and i want you to be a speaker and that's the first time ever second time ever other than the radio dubai heard of my story and a lot of people started connecting with me and then i started becoming i became a motivational speaker because i wanted people to realize from my life of what i've done like climbing stairs still going to the gym even on being on a wheelchair i mean i could have i could have literally backed out from that idea of the stairs i would have got from people or what i would have been of the uncertainty of what would have happened but i i did not allow that to affect me for me it was just i need to get back in a gym and work my uh, work on me that was it there was no left to it there was no right to it and nothing ever stopped me and initially even you know there were times when i used to go to gym people would be like i'm like oh, hey could you please give me because i could not reach the dumbbell rack could you please give me those weights he's like how much do you want 5 4 I was like no 15. So you see the ma- mindset of people and today those same guys just watch me killing a set of 50s and like uh, you know they just dro- jaw drop. Yeah, I didn't think you, you know? could do that. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Know, and uh, yeah, it, it, it was just uh, to show people and I I speak in a lot of schools. I've I've given a lot of in companies. I go I share them with my story of how I see life, what I've learned with it. because even the whatever i've done in my life till date i also have my challenges people telling me so did all this is possible but that's not so one thing was even driving a car they're like how are you going to drive a car how are you ever going to be I by yourself in there's some this i've heard of cars uh that are specially built for people with disabilities that you you uh, the accelerator and the brake are done with your hands, hands. Yeah. so people never thought but guess what guys i have a license in dubai as of today Woo-hoo! yeah i have been today i have yeah i have i've been driving so okay. i'm i'm going to be driving the way back i mean cool Amazing. yeah so Is, how, how it works you, yeah, exactly you know you're coming to that so as you said there were a lot of cars so i never wanted a car that has to be specially mm-hmm. modified just for this you know so uh i i did my training in galdari and all that so there's a stick okay and it's got two two rods which goes to this uh, and it's all controlled in your hand it's like basically like a joystick so one of the end you connect to the brake the other end you connect to the accelerator so if you press with your thumb when i press with my thumb it's the accelerator that gets pushed and when i push push with my palm it's the brakes it's as simple as that and i can use that in any car 
Wow. So literally, it's like if you oh, give me five okay. minutes, it's it's a very it's a, a it's so you could just get into my <coughs> car, yeah, p- hook it in, plug it in, and right I can hand is brake and accelerator, yeah. left hand's on the steering. No, wheel. no, no, it's it's all on the same. It's literally my brake is on my th- my actuator is on my thumb, my brake is on my palm. That's yeah. it. Yeah, and then the, this hand's on the steering wheel. Yeah, that's hand on the steering wheel. Do it's like even wow. cool, you know, like like yeah, <laughs> yeah. like a roller. Right? <laughs> yeah. Wow, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's so amazing. Th- that's how. So I you're do driving. It. Yeah, I drive. I drive pretty much. I've I've been driving like yeah. From I got my license on uh, March, mm-hmm. so from then since then I I drive awesome. I take the car in the, in the nights I go you know nearby yeah call some friends and just well that's go. that's so great because in a city like this it gives you independence yeah you can uh, you can do things on your own without yeah. asking people to drive you and stuff or without yeah, having to exactly. take two and a so half hours of public transport. The the whole point for all this was just so I can be completely independent. I do not have to ask somebody even if I just want to go to maybe. Uh, one kilometer, two kilometers away. You know, I, I can do it on myself rather than just taking a yeah. a cab in a car. And, and that was the idea. You know. So what does that allow you to do now that you couldn't do before? Allow me to do. No- oh, I move around by myself. I don't have to ask. Even my parents, like they know, I'm like completely. Even they had their own fears initially. Like, how is he going to do? Like today, they're like Sujit, seriously, like he's going to do it better than you. Like you know, <laughs> they tell my sisters like he can because they know that that's the amount of confidence that they have in me. They believe in me, and even I have. Like I've never stopped myself from doing whatever I have to do, you know. Yeah. And that was one thing where it struck me, as you asked earlier. A lot of people ask me, like, they used to say, "It's good so that you did, but you know, you can, you always need somebody with you." Like though I started going to the gym by myself, you still need somebody with you. There's no way you can uh, be by yourself completely. And what did I do last year after writing my exams, CFA exams? Um, I took a flight from Sharjah. I told my mom and dad, "I need, a, I need a vacation. I need a break." Okay, who are you going with? I'm like by myself. Are you sure? They didn't even. That's all they asked me. Are you sure? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, okay, done. Because they believed in me. And they they know I could. And I took a flight from Sharjah. I went back to Bangalore, where I um, where I did my college. Had the best time of my life. Killed it for like one week. Partied crazy. And I came back by myself in a in a flight. Wow. I stayed by myself and friends were over to my place. Yeah. And I, I I mean I did that. And the minute I did that, people like you know like, how did you do it? Wow, that's crazy. You did it. But till then it was like there's no way you can do it. Yeah. And suddenly I have to show it to them. It is possible. And that's what I've been doing. That's what I try to tell a lot of other people out there. If I can do it, for me, for me, it's like for some reason I can take this hit. Mm-hmm. I can take this impact. But definitely I do not believe what the doctors say. I do not believe it's a permanent. I definitely have faith. I mean, I've come so far. I've broken most of the, um, most what doctors have told me it's not possible for you. Most mm-hmm. what people have told me it's not possible for you. And now people watch my videos and they get inspired to go to the gym, yeah. which <coughs> makes me so happy. And that's an uh, energy that drives me. For me, it's pure gratitude. I'm I'm really grateful to be alive. I'm really grateful to be so you know, here. I have some questions for you. What uh, for other people in in your situation or with similar injuries? What uh, advice would you give them? What tips? Never what give would you up. Say? Never give up. Never listen to what others have to tell you. Never allow others others' decisions to become uh, your reality. That that's the best thing I I tell them. And never give up. You know, always always. I'm I'm so driven. Today for me, I'm I'm so driven. I'm so motivated to do a lot of things. And for me, it's just to push myself every every day, by the by the day, by the week, by the month, so that I'm growing internally. And now, because I'm doing that, I don't have to watch what others are telling me. Like it does not even bother me today. And because of what I've done, nobody even comes and tells me, Sujit, it's not possible to you, because they know that's a very wrong statement, mm-hmm. you know. But I tell people because I I know a lot of other paraplegics who have connected with me after they have seen my videos, and I tell them, you know, because they get inspired by what I do. Because I d- I don't stop I d- I don't uh, limit myself. For me, it's like if you want something, go get it. You will find a way. Just another way. It's a different perspective. As I said earlier, everybody only thought about walking a step or being yeah. picked up. Nobody thought of crawling. But it's possible, right? So that's what I tell people. You know, just do what you have to do. Don't let anything stop you. And I have guys in wheelchairs who have started working out now after watching awesome. my videos. That's amazing. And, 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 and it it really benefits them because. I think gym is one place also, you know, fitness is one place. It's more than just building muscle. It's more than just looking great. It's a lot of mental. Don't you agree with me? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's, uh, I, I still tell people, go into a gym, stop thinking it's all about muscles and things. It's, 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 about it's 80% and your mental than it's, than it's, uh, it's yeah. about just building. Yes, this is the goal. This is the bonus you get, I think, your body. But I, I definitely say it's 80% uh, mental. And I tell people, you know, get to the gym, work out, do it religiously. Don't cheat. It will give you results but to see those results you have to be consistent that's that's all i tell people you know 
Um, so my other my other question is for fitness trainers who um, may be approached by somebody with an injury like yours, what advice would you give them? Oh, how do you train somebody yeah. like this? Yeah, there's a lot of things because a lot of guys don't understand you lose a lot of sensation, you lose a lot of balance. You know, like putting weights on your legs is not a very good thing because initially when I was also in a gym, my trainer used to ask him, give me those weights. He would just come and put on my leg. For an other guy, they could still put 20 kilos on your legs before you pick it up on your hands, yeah? But if you put on, on, a, on somebody like me being in a wheelchair, it's not a very good thing. Like as in... It can damage my muscles. Yeah. Right. So these are things that people should be known about. Like as I said earlier, me falling off a j- uh, falling off a wheelchair due to a lot of a uh, lot of weights. So these are things they should look into it and start slow. I would say because I've started slow. I started with like five, ten kilos max initially. Start slow. Start figuring out how much strength you have here. You know how can you work your way out. S- start using. I always tell. I've seen a lot of other videos also. A lot of other paraplegic bodybuilders. They tie themselves up. So this that's what I was like ask you, yeah. Yeah, mm. tying themselves is like super important. So yeah, I never knew that as well. Like I, it would never occur to me that yeah, you would need to tie yourself up. You need to tie up. yourself up. Yeah. So I do tie well, when I'm on the machine for the cable rows. So w- when I do really heavy, it's not very... Pr- um, people cannot hold me for that long because there's a lot of weight even I'm using and they got to yeah. use the same amount of weight to keep Absolutely. my body yeah. down. So I tie myself on the on the bench and they just have to keep the bench on the ground. But you know? obviously now this is... F- almost five years post-accident so you're obviously very fit and able um but if somebody's just they wouldn't be tying themselves up at that stage yeah because they, they're not aware of it yeah until they start falling or things like happening to them you know but yeah these are the main advices i tell them you know tie tie yourself up keep picking yourself up keep moving don't stay stationary and i tell a lot of people you got to keep moving because the moment you stop moving is when you start seeing differences in your body like pressure sores as I said earlier and injuries to your body and, and, and just start slow you know just start slow mainly tying up Th- these are like the most important things who do you get your inspiration from like you kind of mentioned just quickly there you said you look at other paraplegic bodybuilders online is there anybody in particular that, that you focus on but all this came later like yeah. for me to get back for me to get back initially to be driven this much it was just pure um it, it was it was anger it was a lot of anger to be honest initially it was like people telling me no's a billion times on my face this is not possible that's not possible i heard so much no's where i'm like i can't allow this to happen anymore and do we bonzalo stories where i really got triggered i'm like i can't give up you know i have to do something about my life because clearly nobody is going to change anything doctors are my parents aren't there's only one person who can make a difference and that's me so that's what literally motivated me and and it was gratitude to be alive because when i started looking back into my life after my injury i mean i was an athlete i was a fast i was i was pretty fast on my feet i used to box i always wanted to go amateur level boxing i mean i had the speed i had the capabilities i was, I was not i was a pretty decent rider as well i had all that but i was i took so much of it for granted i took so much uh, I never bothered about it because you never realize that you're going to lose something like this very essential like walking in your life you know and uh, so me at, in short at that age was like just a party freak boxing was something because of that made me feel like I was a guy very untouchable you know like nobody could mess with me and people knew that and I had all the pride of it you know what I mean I was I was very different back then I saw things very differently it was just partying you know just killing life you know enjoying you know it, I, was, I was very uh, in a very different route and after my accident is when I just got a stop in life. And, you know, it was like, you know, now st- and it was literally I had so much of time in my hand at those days initially because I was just home. Right. And I was just recalling of my past, my life and how I was and what I did and, you know, all the things I've been into. And I was like, what, what was the whole point of all this? You know, what was uh, why didn't you give your best? You could have done so much more better in those things, you know, but you never cared or you were very uh, very arrogant about the fact that you know you had the speed or you had the this thing and and you know boxing made you feel like you were untouchable and stuff so today i'm just grateful mm-hmm. i'm so grateful to be alive i'm so grateful that i have some people in my life i'm so grateful to breathe literally you know sometimes there is breath i just take i'm so grateful for this breath i'm so grateful for life my parents that i have today i'm able to at least see talk i mean imagine the alternatives as you were saying also earlier but your it could have been a lot worse it could have even been in a position where I'm not even able to move my hand if my yeah. injury was like two vertebrae up. Yeah. Which is a, which is very possible. But I'm not, I mean, even though with whatever I have today, I'm going to do my best for it. That was my attitude. And I'm like, now at least since I have what I have, like I still have my arm power, I'm going to use the max of it. And I have not left anything 
I've not skipped on anything not to do it. Yeah, you were mentioning before that now obviously we discussed this before you're a motivational speaker, you're a fitness influencer and now you're also working and driving. <laughs> yes, I am working and driving as well. <laughs> That's crazy. And uh, yeah, I mean, working is because 2017 was all about giving talks, motivating and even the TEDx thing came up mm-hmm. and uh, that was that was big as well. And uh, I ended up winning an award as well last year. Mm-hmm. It's called Masala Awards. It's like the Bollywood IFA Awards. GCC version. Cool. So there were a lot Congrats. of celebrities, and mm-hmm. they uh, one of the celebrity nominated me for the most inspirational personality, 2017, and I won an award for that. And Amazing. that just motivated me to another level because finally my work. Also, I put in. It was not for the award, but when I got that, it just drove me to another level to do more. Because people, I get a lot of DMs. You know, I get a lot of messages from people in Facebook and Instagram. People asking me, Sujit, this is this is. How do you see? How do I get over this? You know, very basic problems for them, but it's the biggest problem for them. And how do you overcome it? How do you manage to stay positive? How are you even happy? I mean, I know you can be, but dude, aren't you on a wheelchair? Like, doesn't that affect you? I said no, because number A, I do not believe that I'm going to be in the rest of my life. Second, I have now. I'm grateful to be alive, and I'm going to. I'm not. I'm not going to complain of my past. I mean, it is what it is. I'm going to live, and I'm going to live to my fullest. You know, because for me today, it's way more than just my body. It's mm-hmm. it's totally life. Yeah, in and general, also to live, you know? the inspiration that you bring to others and the motivation to like, you know, like if if you can do this, so can others. There's exactly. a path carved out for them. Th- th- that's my whole point. As I said, for some reason, I can take this. For some reason, I can take this injury and still be enjoy every day of my life. Still wake up motivated, yeah. driven. You know, still wake up so driven, and I yeah. don't, I don't, I don't leave anything. So when motivational talks, I was, I was never a guy shy, but so till then, I was like, I was very doubtful. Like, would I be even able to give in front of a crowd? Today, I've given to easily more than thousand people. Awesome. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, talks yeah. and uh, motivation came. Fitness influencing, that's uh, that's never going to stop. Mm. Like as long as I'm breathing, I'm yeah. in a gym Do six days a week. Do you know? Sometimes I find what what really helped me is uh, complete acceptance. Like once you accept that this is your life and accept it with love and gratitude, then you know that it's there for a reason. I remember reading something, and it was it was something along the lines of "What's meant for me it will never miss me, and what misses me was never meant for me." And it kind of like every time I say that to myself, I'm like, "This was meant for me. Like this is mine, and I need to do the best thing that I can with it." So you. You've obviously done exactly. I, the I same. totally agree on that. Like, I mean, everything has a purpose, and uh, this just brought me to another direction of my life, what I've never thought before. It pushed me in a way. It made me a guy who I would have probably never become if I was, if you know what I mean, right? Yeah. Before, so it made me realize a lot. I'm, I'm so thankful for this mindset I have today, that uh, of, of growth, of inspiring people, of bringing people up. You know, this is not because for me, it's not just me. It's not. It's, it's not just about me today at all. It's for me. It's Because I know a lot of people watch me, and my inspiration is driven. And me, the day I give up, is the day they see that there is a fault in the system. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So th- there's nothing that's that's th- that can bring me down. I mean, yes, I do have my bad days as well. There are days even when reality just hits me. You know, you're suddenly like, dude, why and all that. But I give mm-hmm. myself about like let's say 48 hours, literally two days. There might there I, I might go a little silent, but then I'm like, you know what, Sujit, so that's it. You're done. Your sad face is done. You were sad. Okay, <laughs> you're normal. It's a human being. It's not like you have to be happy all the time, or you yeah. have to be. That's like this is how, this is how life is. You know, mm-hmm. you have your downs as well, and my downs is if I'm very quiet, if I have to cry, if I have to do whatever, I'm gonna do it in that 48 hours. But then the third day, get back up. Yeah, get back up. Start seeing what you why why you're doing this for. Start seeing the goal. Start believing why you even started all this. You started fitness not just to. Just to build your body or anything, it's for a bigger purpose because you believed you're going to walk. You started talking because you believed you're going to inspire people. You believed people are going to listen to you and they're going to change their lives. And I have done, and, and I've tried my best. And they are. I've tried my best, mm-hmm. in, not, not in just terms of fitness. You know, even I get a lot of people asking me advices of, you know, their boss. Literally, a lady from Bahrain, uh, her boss was treating her like, like, like shit. And she was like, you know, I don't know what to do. I'm so demotivated. I feel so bad to go. And I, I just, I, I, I ended up in a conversation with her, asking her, telling her, you know, don't allow his attitude to, uh, l- l- don't, don't let his attitude reflect on your outcome. You know, just because he's giving you negativity does not mean you have to be negative. You can start seeing the situation in a different way. You can take it differently. And trust me, eventually the situation will change. 
definitely i mean this neg- negativity can never beat positivity never mm. it can never overpower it it can never beat it i think what's important so so the people you'll inspire are the people maybe who are experiencing something similar to you but there's also a lot of power in what you're saying to reflect in other people's lives like people who don't have these challenges it's like whoa you know there was me feeling sad there was me feeling down about my problems and when you put it on the spectrum what have i got to really complain about like if you can do what you're doing then oh i'm a little bit tired today or my, my boss was a little bit mean to me this afternoon so i'm going to go home and feel it's like pff, i need to snap out of it if people like you can do what you're doing then my problems pale into, into significance yeah it puts things into perspective massively. i think that's yeah. very important for people to hear these kinds of stories because and i said this to you when we used mm-hmm. to do the rehab that it allows you reframe like what i'm going through so what i'm going through is is this and sometimes in my world that's really really heavy on me that's quite difficult for me to deal with but when it, when you you go online and you see these other things it's like oh i need to snap out of this i need to wake up i need to get going i need to f- just if you can do it gosh i can do it suddenly you start seeing that yours is not the biggest problems right there are bigger people with the bigger problems than you no i tell the people the same thing i i want them to see my stories because I had it at one point of time. I had everything. I was walking, I was running. I never realized what my potential was. Today I do, mm-hmm. but I'm not able to and now as of now. But I tell them, you have it now. Realize it. See it. And 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 They're and very powerful and words. And and uh adapt to it and start and start doing it. Start making a change. Just don't sit back there and watch or saying that you don't have time. You everybody has time. Everybody has the power. Everybody has the potential. it's just of how much you realize it and how much you use your potential yeah. like i had it but then i i had 100% back then but today i give my 500% you know like maybe that sujit earlier back then wouldn't be able to do what he does today you know what i mean yeah. so i just tell people like you have it now you have the time you have watch and learn there's a guy in front of you telling you that he was there you know so don't 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 skip out on that don't uh, don't don't be ignorant to it don't think that you can always have what you have because mm-hmm. yeah. tomorrow it can be taken away yeah. from you yeah. Yeah. so use your max and i'm going to say this first on your podcast since it's mm-hmm. my first podcast as yeah. well i have a big something coming up next mm-hmm. week so for me it's always to do something which can uh, make people blow their minds off or make people whoa like how did he do that and last year it was me ever first ever when people telling me never he can never do anything in a gym to me going and bench pressing 100 kilos wow now before anybody of sad like that's just 100 kilos i know there's totally some buff guys out there you like yourself <laughs> definitely 100 wouldn't be a a big deal but for me being on a wheelchair yeah, 100 was a challenge and i did it i i from literally starting with 5 kilos i ended up bench pressing 100 kilos and i did two reps awesome. i could have gone three but i tell people the coward in me stopped at <laughs> okay cuz i was scared obviously like, you don't 100 kilos on your chest right but the whole point that day was to show people to tell people and see and even it was for me to know that i could do it and i did it yeah. and when i did it i want to show people that this was a guy who you might thought wouldn't even be able to enter a gym and i just bench press 100 kilos mm-hmm. i that's mean that's pretty amazing that's not bad right? yeah yeah mm-hmm. that's people fully working out for years and years and years have that as a goal and they never reach it you know people i think they they need to see that it has been done for them to start doing it yeah you know that, that that that's what i think like seeing i always seeing is believing isn't it totally seeing is believing and i that that's what i'm trying to do and my one example i've given in my talks is of a guy uh, roger banister Roger Bannister the runner mm-hmm. yeah yeah so until 1984 or 54 it was considered impossible for a man to run a mile under 4 minutes it was considered impossible and then Roger Bannister broke that record on May 6th that year he ran 1 mile in 3 minutes 59 seconds now the only difference is 0.1 second but you know what happened just cuz he did that impossible by 0.1 second people saw this is possible and today and after that that year many people broke his record mm. yeah. but that did not matter roger banister it was not the point that he was fast to break 3.1 f- to break the 4 minute barrier he just cuz roger banister did it it took him a sense of a lot of uncertainty to do something that was considered impossible yeah. till then but when he did it the rest of the world followed and today it's a normal routine yeah mm-hmm. they're saying a similar thing now at the 2 hour marathon just 
all people are almost there almost there huh? almost under two hours so it's an interesting thing to keep an eye on mm. mm-hmm. once the first person does it let's see what happens yeah That'd it will be, crazy. be a cascade yeah and yeah. then people are going to follow it and then it's going to become a normal routine trust me yeah that's why as i said i was pushing myself next week i'm going to be pulling a car <laughs> really <laughs> on a wheelchair and i did it wow. and this time i'm just adding two more cars I have a video if you want we can uh, put it yeah. but uh, I so haven't so not officially told it out yeah talk about that a little bit so what wh- why car H- how is it wh- how are you going to do okay. it? Wh- what's going to happen I'll uh, so I'm going to get um, a car that's going to be tied to my body okay and uh, I'm going to be having a car in front as well which is going to have the ropes attached to it and I'm going to pull myself so the car I'm like an anchor for the car and the car is going to be on me and I'm going to pull two cars one after another attached to each other so okay i so definitely need to, to see this to see this so it's going to happen so it's been planning from a while and uh, so it was last month where i wanted to really try it and i just uh, took i drove my car all the way to mohesna called a buddy of mine and uh, we tied my car on my on my shoulders and uh, basic very basic rope just put it on my shoulders and i started wheeling myself and uh, the car was moving i was like okay this is possible wow. mm-hmm. and the idea for this is basically um, Now I tell you p- pull a car or anybody else I would be like hey you know what just uh, pull a car by default anybody would be like dude that's a car man it's it's not a toy it's 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 hard <laughs> yeah. some guys would be like yeah I can pull a car like why not right and and they would go probably pull a car but then I tell now guys pull two cars dude there's no way we can pull two cars but it's possible it's not impossible yeah but now i tell a guy in a wheelchair or anybody else who is hearing this tell a guy in a wheelchair pull a car dude what are you saying right do you do you agree with me they're like there's no way a guy in a wheelchair is going to pull a car and now you're going to see a guy in a wheelchair pulling two cars well when when you post that we'll definitely when repost it, it for you cuz that's it's so it's been going on from a while and uh, like the talks and finally we're going to be doing it uh, about next week or the coming week yeah the coming week we are planning for it in our school and uh, having two cars two mini coopers attached to each other so total weight of 2400 kilos yeah will you send us the data so i'd love to come yeah that might be well, that might I work will. if we can get along to go and check will, it out I yeah i'd love to go and see it i will can. update it it's good it's gonna be yeah it's, it's gonna be in the morning maybe uh in the coming week i will definitely update mm-hmm. you on it yeah, yeah so, it's amazing. so what we'll i've been doing la- last two weeks literally after work can you believe it after work i drive my car i call my friend i call her as well who just came with me we go all the way to this empty parking lot literally tying cars pulling and it hasn't been easy because though i did it first time months back it was simple mm-hmm. but suddenly the weight of these two cars are 2535 kilos what i have been pulling so there's no enough thrust power to give that kind of push initially yeah. like because my wheelchair is light as well and friction, you can't yeah. do mm. with that usually people need their legs and things like that yeah. so that was a challenge of me so initially the first days i went my, it was not moving the car was not moving i was so frustrated i was using my entire energy i was literally falling exhausted you know putting as much as i can then we tried another ways like we turn the wheelchair and the cars are in front of me and i'm pulling the cars but then we realized is the guy who's holding me has to be he was he was like he couldn't take it cuz as i said the amount of pressure i put he has to put the same amount of pressure to hold me on the yeah. on the ground so we were like that's not working i'm like but i have to do it so this was literally 2 3 days of me going every day seeing oh this is not possible that's not possible but i was not willing to give up i needed to do two cars and uh, that's how i even tried so we were like let's put a car in front and let me pull and and that's that's what worked cuz then there is enough force Mm. to pull both the cars one and after another you know so we are looking forward to seeing this and mm. we're definitely yeah. going to come along and support you on that it sounds amazing the, the, the my whole idea for this is to also show people now suddenly you saw a guy you're going to see a guy who just did yeah, it on will. on mm. two on two cars and and that was you that was something you would definitely consider impossible now this was something you would definitely consider impossible right now look at your own lives yeah. now what is what is something considered impossible in your life maybe getting that promotion maybe reaching that goal maybe getting that maybe getting this which is impossible for you brick like i can be i can maybe reach this oh but that is impossible why do you have this mindset why do you have this gap why everybody is equal everybody is born equally it's how you use and how you build yourself up that makes a difference so basically we're breaking the glass ceiling yeah, we and totally everything is possible everything is possible i love that people are just 
limiting themselves. People are limited or they are only in a certain position today because they choose to be. They choose to be. There's nothing. You want to do something, you can definitely do it. I wanted to get to the gym. I, I did whatever it took. It took me five and a half hours. End of the day, did I get myself to the gym? In Business Bay, I did. So it's, it's literally patience, I think. It's literally patience. It's literally dedication. A lot of dedication, I, I totally think. So I have never stopped myself like, I wanted to get into the music business as well. And uh, so as of last year, what I did was, uh, so I was in motivational speaking. I was a motivational speaker. I became one. I became an official influencer, even for the Dubai Fitness Challenge. I'm an official influencer for them as well. And uh, I wanted to get into, I love, I love music. I wanted to get into DJing. And I bought a console as well. And now hopefully before this year ends, I'll be, you'll even see me playing a gig. Wow. Awesome. <coughs> That's I'm like, amazing. Why stop You're yourself? You're just unstoppable. To, why stop yourself? Mm -hmm. like, this is my passion. I'm going to get it. And I'm going to be dominating it like, for sure because I'm going to put all what I have into it. And uh, last year, I, uh, when I was in the hospital, I came back from Bangalore after my solo trip and I was in the hospital and, and I was just by myself. I did not allow my mom to stay with me because I don't want her to be in a hospital just because of me. So I like, you go home. I'll be here. They used to come in the mornings and they used to go back. And I wrote a rap. So I used to love rapping. As a kid, I used to like literally take out printouts of Eminem and 50 Cent and be in the mirror, put my cap on, <laughs> yeah. put like a fake chain on and be like, yo, tick, tick, you know, <laughs> I used to go like that. And uh, last year, I, I ended up writing a rap and uh, Chris heard it and he played it on the radio Amazing. and a lot of people were inspired by the rap because that rap was just a message for me to tell people that it was a it was a positive idea in my mind at that time and I wanted to convert it into a song because nothing better than a song right I mean that's something you won't forget and um, and uh, yeah that got played on the radio a lot of people like like loved it liked it Amazing. So, Sujit, thank you so much for coming today on A Life of Education. Your story is unbelievably, like, impressive and very inspirational. Thank so you so much. Thank you for inspiring all of us. Yeah, where can people follow your story online? On what, what uh, Instagram, site? it's Sujit Story. Does it spell that? S-U-J-I-T-H Story. S-T-O-R-Y. Uh, okay, and they'll be able to see all of your, all of your stuff on that. Definitely. Cool, awesome. I, I can't, I can't wait to do more. You know, I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm an example. I think for others, if, if my purpose is to empower others, to bring people up, I mean, I'm so happy. Yeah. And that's exactly what I'm going to be no, doing. Absolutely, man. There's yeah. a lot of people facing different challenges. Some, some, yeah. some more challenging than others, and it's just great to hear that people are succeeding at overcoming the things that they're faced with, because it puts everything in perspective. It's, it's mm. you just, I just tell people, don't stop, don't limit yourself. Like, what is your potential? What is this? Is your life? Yeah. This is a one-time opportunity. You're not if you if you lost it, you're not getting it back again. That's it. It's just it's your life. Why not do it? Not for not for anybody. For yourself. And if yeah. you're not doing it for yourself, then who are you really doing it for? Mm -hmm. So stop limiting. Stop thinking that is impossible. Anything is possible. Like literally, go into the imagination, the wildest imagination, that is possible for you. Can you believe it? It's hard to maybe digest it initially. But if you really believe it, it is possible. And, and, and I, I, I guarantee tell you that's, that's working in my life and it can work in anybody's. Yeah. You know? Amazing. Awesome. Amazing. Well, on that note, we'll finish on that. Thanks a lot for coming to Bye us. Bye, guys. Thank you so much. See you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>